This is Twit. So last week I talked a little bit about AI and the taking our jobs threat, which is, you know, off, often the, what people, you know, are very concerned about with the potential of AI, uh, specifically about the panic around Apple's AI narrators uh, to actual, you know, audiobook narrator jobs. So let's continue this theme a little bit. This time around, it's journalism itself that's getting some headlines. A futurism article by Frank Lannimore actually highlights uh, a discovery made by someone on Twitter, Gail Breton, a Brayton, an online marketer who took to Twitter to show how CNET uh, was publishing articles written by AI. Now, Brayton captured a few screenshots of a, Google, of a few Google searches that actually show a few articles uh, to start off with as examples. So one article is called, What are NSF fees and why do banks charge them? And you've got another one called, Should you break a CD early for a better rate? So obviously these two examples and many of the other ones um, referenced are all financial kind of focused articles. Also seem to be kind of like explainer type articles, uh, which we can get to in a second. Brayton noted his search results pulled back at least 72 articles published by CNET starting November 11th uh, that carried with them a disclaimer and that disclaimer, at least in, you can see it in the search results, it's kind of like part of the text of the search result inside Google. It says, this article was generated using automation technology and thoroughly edited and fact checked by an editor on our editorial staff. So that's the quote. Now, Brayden said this disclaimer printed easily within the Google search results, as you could see on the actual article pages, however, the byline listed says CNET money staff. Now, if you knew to click on CNET Money Staff, you would then reveal that disclaimer in full. So, yes, CNET disclosed, but also it's not really made entirely clear unless you go digging beyond mm -hmm. what's shown on the screen at first glance. So there's, I mean, there's something there. It's kind of like, yeah, they disclosed, but did they put it right out in front, you know, where it probably deserved to be? No, they didn't. You had to know to click the thing to see it. Um, so I'm sure there are people who read it and who might never have questions or, or second guessed it. Um, now, Brayton noted that Google metrics show that some of these pages are being rewarded with a lot of search traffic. And that actually points to Google's own algorithms not recognizing or not demoting the content based on its AI-derived roots. And this is important because last April, Google's uh, search advocate, John Mueller, uh, put out a post or a, a, a blog, I think it was, citing that AI content was against its own guidelines. So if that's the case, is Google kind of, you know, is Google even aware that this was written by AI? And if it's not aware, that's that's interesting in and of itself. Um, but if it is, why is this getting through being promoted, all this kind of stuff? Um, I guess one question there is, and I'm curious to know what you think about this, when you're mm -hmm. talking about explainer articles or articles where it's facts or details, they are fact checking. I mean, often these are articles that, you know, I've known some people who who write articles like these and they're, they're not their favorite articles to write, right? They're really mundane and boring, pretty easy to piece together because you're just talking about facts and details. Mm -hmm. um, so like, does it matter if an AI wrote it, if it's still factual, if it's still fact checked, if it's disclosed, like, I don't know, does that change things? If it's fact checked, what? Let me try that again. If it's no, I said that correctly. I don't know why. That no, you got wrong. it. If it's fact <laughs> checked and it is disclosed, then on the surface, at the very least, yeah, I think that that's fine. You know, you obviously don't want to be putting out a piece that is inaccurate, right. um, and I think that's the biggest uh, thing from that perspective. And then on the other side, so journalistically speaking. The fact checking and uh, the disclosure are the two, in my opinion, the two check boxes you need to check. So that's considering the considering the journalistic perspective. Then we have to consider the humanist perspective, I guess, um, in which you say all of the. So I, I, it's been my experience that working at a uh, a site that is kind of like a blogger site or a, a tech news site uh, where you're writing, everyone is underpaid or almost everyone is underpaid. Mm. Um, yeah. And 
remains underpaid the whole time they work for the company. <laughs> and um, if you are already underpaying people, and then uh, there's one specific company that I'm thinking of now uh, that acquired a company that I worked for in the past, um, who is notorious for not only underpaying, but also having one of the most paid, the, the highest paid CEOs in publishing. Then mm. you start to go, you're trying to cut costs uh, by not hiring freelancers or by uh, cutting down on the number of posts that people are doing, so thereby being able to reduce your staff. If you are adding an AI system to put out posts so that you can increase the pay that you give to people because you're making more money because those posts that, uh, you know, you can do more of those posts so that it leads to more Google results or whatever. If the math ends up equaling you paying more money to the people uh, that work for you, that's great. But when we look at that, how often does that happen? I think it's very unlikely <laughs> that uh, yeah, it's going yeah. to result in people getting paid more. I think it's going to result in cost cutting uh, measures. So I think we, you know, that's the thing. We can't look at any of this in a vacuum, um, mm. in the, the vacuum of, of journalistic integrity. As I said, I can, I feel comfortable giving it those check boxes um, if you disclose it properly uh, and you fact check it. It's just that as a human being, I can't just go with that and call it a day and say, okay, you yeah, know, it's fine. Yeah. It's good. Cause I got to consider the other uh, sides of it. And that's my worry uh, with that. Uh, th then there's the, I guess the third part of me that is <laughs> like hated writing those kinds of pieces that uh, yeah, I'm glad right. that there's something that can do that. <laughs> so that's good. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely a mixed bag. Right. Yeah. That's how I feel about it too. It's definitely a mixed bag. And I should also point out, like, it's not like this is the first time that articles like these have been written by computers online. We've seen that for years. You know, a lot of like link baity kind of uh, junk, junk sites that are just collecting web traffic, you know, for ads displayed on the screen. You see, I mean, what, what seems to be anyways, a lot of those articles are probably written by, by robots or, or just randomly generated in some cases. Um, and, so CNET being a news, you know, a very well-known, respected news uh, news agency, let's say, um, that's maybe a little strange. But this isn't even the first time that we've seen that. The Associated Press has been doing this for earnings reports, apparently, since 2015. So there is an application of this sort of thing, you know, that that it, mm -hmm. the AP is doing as well. And again, it's it's like... What is the kind of article? Well, an earnings report is a lot of, you know, pre, I think it's easier to write something like that because it's just based on, it's based on sheer facts and data. Yeah, facts. and also you know I mean? oftentimes it's an AI that's reading that earnings report that has been generated by an AI that then takes that information and gives it to the mm. people who, you know what I mean? So yeah. that, that's, th yeah, um, I, I think there are certain things um, that, the value of having a human do it is very, very, very low uh, and ends up being kind of busy work for someone yeah. versus just getting that done uh, by way. I mean, unless again, if you've got the earnings report editor that's your company and you're trying to fire them, um, that stinks. I know that yeah. it will happen, but that stinks. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, not, yeah. I totally agree with that. So anyways, interesting to note um i don't know that at least you know the last time i checked um earlier earlier this morning i did not see a reply from cnet as far as this is concerned because it's not like they they announced this and said hey we're trying something new we are going to have a, you know a ai write some of our you know kind of fact factoid related stories or or whatever um it just kind of started happening i don't know that cnet was required necessarily to make that announcement but when you're talking about something as you know obviously very sensitive and kind of uh it has the potential to impact jobs and things like this and you're a journalistic outfit like you probably should but um they're not required to i guess so i mean i'm just curious to see what cnet says eventually about this and uh if other uh, outlets are doing this or or considering doing it. Ch tools like ChatGPT make it hard to not 
at least entertain the idea to be, you know, along with AI and the development of it to be at the cutting edge of what comes next. Cause it's really hard to stand in the face of this and say, no, don't, don't right. progress, you know, don't develop <laughs> exactly. that idea anymore. Like it's kind of just going to happen. So do you ride the wave with it or do you push back against it and you know, to what end? So anyways, <sighs> I just that. want, yeah. I just want everybody to be able to have jobs. Yes. I know that's yeah, just too I much know. to ask. I know, I know. <laughs> it's not the world we live in. Yeah. What, what is the, uh, what is it? The, uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it. The, the, uh, universal basic, basic income, income? Universal, universal, universal basic income. income. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, I, I'm very careful about mentioning that. Cause that's for some people are like too far. It's super, but, super triggering. Whisper, yes. That's actually what I do want is universal basic income, <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell everybody I said that. <laughs> I think you just did. Oh crap. <laughs> this is that's live. How podcasting works. Oh no. <laughs> Are you listening like out at there? the core of podcasting, Micah? What that you say in the AI mic goes out to that. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> How can you prove it? Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about? just the ISO and exposure triangle in general. Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. <laughs> 